What's up everybody? This is Ash. You're watching Ash on Comics. This is my weekly comics pull list for July 4th, 2018. And uh, as tradition, I skipped last week and I was really bummed. I got my In-N-Out Burger. I'm going to try to do this every week. It's fantastic. It's number two here. Um, let's get into it. It's a slow week. First... Oh man, if you guys don't have In-N-Out where you live, I feel you. I lived in Colorado for 17 years, and I missed In-N-Out tremendously. This, oh, just less than four bucks. Uh, it's like 415 after tax, but it's like 375. I mean, this is oh man, bang for your buck, one of the best burgers in the world. Yeah, I know you can get like. $20 burger somewhere, it's probably better, but oh, not in the drive-thru. Oh, I gotta take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Gosh, so good. Fourth of July, what's better than burgers? Not hot dogs. So, this week, got my receipt. Thank you, comics and stuff. Great store in San Diego. Um, always real helpful, real nice. Got several locations. Uh, I tried to get down there early this week for the wedding issue, see if there was any variants I could pick up. But, I really should just not kid myself. That's, that's kind of silly. Those variants, they instantly go... Let's see, I think like most of the variants this week were instantly in the $25 range. I'm just not into doing that anymore. I, I doubt, dallied in the whole uh, speculation thing in the 90s. And it's just, just really, it's, it can be fun, I guess. If you've got a lot of disposable income and you enjoy it, I enjoyed it for a while. But I'm really, I found out that I'm really into it for the comics. And it's just fun when a comic that you bought because you loved goes up in value, you didn't buy it because you were expecting it to, that can just be kind of an added um, fun part. So we got the much lauded wedding issue of Batman number 50, or yeah, Batman 50. Um, I was really torn. There's an Art Adams variant, and Art Adams is probably my favorite artist of all time. And so I found he's doing a variant, I was really excited. But the cover that he did... It's good. I liked it. I really wanted it. But it felt like just a stock illustration. Like like DC called him up and was like, Hey, uh, got some art for Batman 50? Oh yeah, I think I got some laying around. So it's just like Batman in a you know standard comic book pose. It was cool. Jim Lee, also one of my other favorite artists of all time, did a great cover. This one feels... More relevant. Well, obviously, it's more relevant to the to the title, but it also kind of a thought out. You know, it's not just a standard. Hey, I'm going to draw Batman standing around doing something. Uh, I love this composition of being in the rain, the emotion in the in the drawing. So I was like, I I got to go with this one. And people go, Why don't you just get both? Well, it's like, well, first of all, it's four ninety nine, and second, I just have this feeling against buying multiple, you know, variants. I I don't. I don't like variants in general. The only reason I'm even doing variants at all is because DC came up with this great full art uh, idea, you know, with, with not just full art, but then putting good art to make you drool over it and want it. Shout out to Trajan. He's right. There needs to be number numbers up here somewhere, either under here or over, I think over here would be best. A little watermark, 50. Um... You know, and you could keep this. Like, DC wouldn't have to change this. Just duplicate the 50, a little 50 watermark. Next issue, 51, you know. So, anyways. This, you, everyone knows about this issue. Uh, Justice League. I love, I hate variants, but I gotta do this. I, I think it's pretty creative. Well, it's not that creative, but I like it all the same. Do... Each of the Justice League characters as a full art cover. So, 
I haven't even read the Justice League. I'm not really a Justice League fan. I bought it just to kind of be open-minded. I like I like Scott Snyder. And I was like, well, it's number one. Everyone's kind of excited about it. I'll get in on it and give it, you know, the standard five or six issue trade run, first trade run, just to see if it's whets my appetite, keeps me going. Then I saw they were doing this, and I bought the first issue was Batman, and then I and I heard, I didn't know they were actually doing this. I saw the first issue was Batman. I was like, cool, I'll pick that up. And then I heard, oh, after that, each one is gonna be a different Justice League character. And that said, okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy each of those issues. I'm gonna collect those for sure. That should be fun to collect, and then I'll make a decision whether to keep going after that. Man of Steel 6. Um, I've done reviews of this. You should know my feelings, hopefully. If you don't, if you don't watch them. This is a good book. I recommend it. This is uh, Move the Needle. Some people have kind of dickered over some of the dialogue and, and what that Bendis has done. Oh, they Bendis speak. Whatever, I think that's ticky tacky. Um, I think I think his reputation is causing people to magnifying glass the book and try to oh, look look at that line right there. That's come on, step back, pretend you don't know it's Bendis, pretend it's some no name new guy. Read the book. If this wasn't Bendis, I think this book would be getting people be like, oh yeah, this who's this new guy? This is a fun book. You can yeah, this is a good book. And last is Unexpected. Um, this one is not getting any real notoriety. And for good reason. Because the first issue didn't have much going on. It just basically was a big action scene. You know, it kind of reminded me of the first issue. was If you're going you know, to watch James Bond movies, and you know, the first ten minutes of the movie is always James Bond doing something. Like, it's not really part of the movie itself. It's just some action scene to kind of, like, get you in and be like, oh, yeah, that was fun. And then the, then the actual story kicks off. That This issue was, like, the first issue was kind of like that. Like, there's just no no actual plot going on. It's just, like, let's throw some characters in. Let's have some action. Let's get you kind of looking and going, ooh, this is what the book can be from an action point. We don't know who these people are. That turns some people off because you obviously don't care about these characters. It works for James Bond because everyone knows who James Bond is. You don't actually know who these people are, so you're you're kind of left uh, scratching your head. I'm still okay with the book. The last one didn't piss me off. It did leave me kind of agreeing with people saying, it's I don't care about these characters. Firebrand was the only one they did any sort of character development at all. These other three um, are just a mystery. As I understand it, this book is going to be out by this character, Neon. And I, if they follow suit, maybe the next, you know, issue three will be the, another character and issue four will be another character. And then we'll start to move on with the plot and you kind of will know about the characters. Um, I'm enjoying this book. This might be my second favorite of the New Age of Heroes uh, behind Immortal Men. I did pick up issues one through six of Silencer, however, which I haven't read. And that could supersede either or both of those comics. I don't know. I've been hearing great things. But so far, I mean, this isn't knocking out of the park. But I definitely see this is a blank slate. Any good writer could come in with these characters. I don't know who these are. I can't judge and say this book's stupid. Because it hasn't done anything yet. But I like the looks of the characters. I like the name. I like the ideas. My imagination kind of goes wild. And I go, oh, this, this could be something cool. And it's not your typical DC team book. DC has a problem making their teams all the same. All full of a Batman character, a Superman character, a Wonder Woman character. That's silly. Anyways. That's my Move the Needle uh, pull list for this week. Um, I hope you liked it. hope you're enjoying the comics you buy. I know it's not a very big list. I really, only, I'm, I really try to be selective on the comics I buy. When I was younger, I would buy, you know, 20 titles a week. Um, it's just, and some people I know, a lot of, actually a lot of comic fans, that's uh, that's how they act. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. That's your hobby. You like doing that. That's great. This is my second wave, sort of, of comic book collecting. And I'm really just trying to be a lot more conservative. I'm trying to keep about 10 to 12 books a month. Um, 
buying, supplementing that with more trade buying on Comixology, so I have less actual bulk comic books. I can enjoy the fun of collecting the books, and I can buy more stuff to actually read through back trade back issues. Um, speaking of trade back issues, Batman, there's some Batman stuff on sale, like up to 80% off on Comixology. I'm picking up three of the Rebirth trades, I think uh, three, volume three, four, and five. So if you are like me or behind um, on on any um, Batman titles, you know, it's a great place. There's other stuff, some, some of the classic stories like Hush, uh, Long Halloween, you know, five ninety nine for a trade uh, is is fantastic. So, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll probably be doing a review of this book first. Let me know, or maybe Man of Steel. It will not be Batman or Justice League, but let me know uh, what you think about these books. What books maybe I should check out? I know Aquaman has piqued my interest. People have been really talking about that. I might. I might have to look over there. Thanks for watching.